the Mule Runtime 4.3 brought performance improvements in terms of thread pools. This is the version where the three thread pools, CPU Lite, CPU Intensive, and Blocking IO were merged into a single Uber pool. Ever wondered why this change was done? If not, let's try to find out the reason in this video. Now let's try to understand the problem. Here is a typical flow. Uh, it has multiple processors uh, which run on different thread pools. This is the version prior to 4.3, which means the version 4.1, 4.2 and so on before 4.3. So in case if you don't understand what does this, uh, what uh, do these thread pools do, I would recommend you to watch the video on the mule thread pools. The link should be in the description below or at the top right corner of this video. So this is a typical flow wherein I have a logger which runs on CPU Lite. Then I have a requester which again runs on CPU Lite because this is non-blocking I.O. And then there is a transform message which runs on CPU intensive. And then the logger. Logger does run on CPU light, but since uh, the logger task can be done by a CPU light thread, it also can be done by CPU intensive thread, right? So there is no thread switch in order to save latency, right? So, so that's the idea. Now this execution looks perfectly fine. But there are a couple of problems in this type of execution. Let's discuss those. So the first one is uncertainty of execution type used by the connector. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, suppose we have a response coming from this re requester and assuming that it's of very small size, it can be easily processed by the transformation. But in case if the response turns out to be huge value, what would happen? Data view would in that case use indexing and it might have to go to the hard disk to push some data on it. It will flush the data. Not all the data will be processed in memory. So when this story comes into picture, what is really happening is that this transformation is basically doing a blocking operation, which is an IO operation. It goes to the disk, persists some data and then starts processing other data, right? Despite this processor having an execution type of CPU intensive, it started doing the task of I blocking IO, which is incorrect, right? So what it would happen, CPU intensive is doing the task of blocking IO and it might happen that CPU intensive pool might get exhausted because CPU light and CPU intensive are always less than this blocking IO thread pool. So due to that reason, the application might exhaust the CPU intensive. The other, the other problem could be, uh, example could be that you might be using a wait function in the transform, which is highly discouraged even in the documents, but that's the reason behind discouraging this. Now this wait will cause the CPU intensive thread to block which results into which may result into exhaustion of thread pool and it might affect the performance so these are just two very simple examples there could be multiple possibilities happening out there for example someone created a custom connector and in case of custom connectors the execution type is determined automatically by the runtime based on introspection but in case if the introspection guess fails and the connector does something different, it might cause performance issue. And this is the major drawback of this model wherein the processors or the connectors are defined based on the execution type and they used the same thread pools. The other problem is that it lacks the ability to determine the execution type, like I said, right? Now the execution type are static since a processor will already have its execution type and it will automatically use the threads from the pool. Had this been dynamic based on the kind of operation the connectors do, it might have saved us uh, from this performance impact. But since this is completely static, so this are thread pool determination is not being done at the runtime based on the statistics.
the other problem is there is no provision to increase or decrease the thread pool size dynamically based on usage so this doesn't happen dynamically it's all the settings are done in the schedulers conf file which is static and it can be done only before starting the application it doesn't happen dynamically so there is no workaround as such that can be done dynamically the other problem is that you can still manually resize the application so when you do performance testing you might realize that this is the problem you're facing you can manually resize the pool by going to schedule a pool conf but this is not this facility is not present in cloud of hosted runtime so due to this the performance of the application was getting impacted and many a times you might find logs in your application wherein it says that the task has been rejected by the scheduler that's an indication that that particular pool has been exhausted it's running out of threads and in that case such logs will come into picture so what could be the possible solution over here so what i think there could be an option to follow the uh, to understand dynamically what is the pattern going on and based on the statistics the runtime could have decided that should this transform be on a cpu intensive or it should be on blocking io similar to something like java's just in time compilation wherein the code which is present gets compiled from bytecode to the native uh, operating system code based on its usage pattern so similar kind of behavior could have been implemented but instead what was done is they introduced the uber pool now they merged all of this pool into a single pool now i'm not sure why this idea came into picture when they could have done optimization and made the runtime even more smart to choose but still they went ahead with uber now there could be time constraint or some decision which might have resulted into this but that's the crux behind the uber pool due to the exhaustion of thread pools and uncertainty of the processing that has been done by a processor the uber pool comes into picture so all these three thread pools are now merged into uber pool now does that mean that we get rid of this three uh, pool we do get rid of these three pools but we can still fall back on the legacy uh, thread pools by changing the scheduler pool config but the execution type still remain which means that the pool remains uber but the execution type of the processor still remains so what what is the maximum size of the uber pool now since three of them are now merged into single pool the max size becomes that of a blocking io so this max size is the same as that of a blocking io wherein this mem is a variable which is being determined by the runtime when it starts based on the available resources so that is how all the pools get merged so that none of the processor gets starved because of thread exhaustion right and it 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 might it will not now affect the performance right now but then what happens to the thread switching the pro actor pattern which we saw in the previous slide wherein from cpu light if the next processor is cpu intensive it switches right so the switch still occurs but I, I i'm not sure why this switch is still required but as per the documentation they say that they still found performance improvements because it's releasing the thread and thread goes back to the thread pool and that is why they continue to make thread switches depending on the uh, performance so like i said right uh, a cpu intensive can switch back to uh, cannot switch back to a light pool but instead a cpu intensive will continue even if the next processor is cpu light so that kind of optimizations still remains so that is about the uber pool now what we do is we'll try to simulate the same issue due to which the uber pool was created by creating a an application in any point studio so let's check that out now back in the studio i have an application created to simulate the same effect which we have discussed in the previous slides here is a listener which listens on port 8081 a logger which works on the cpu like thread pool is doing nothing but just printing process break-ins set variable is where the things change 
it's a weight variable which uses the weight function from data view so what it's basically doing is it's printing the wor uh, hello world string after 10 seconds so eventually what happens is it's causing the cpu light thread to behave as a blocking one so it's becoming blocking io although it's not but it's behaving as blocking io and since the cpu light thread pool and the intensive thread pools are way less than the blocking io thread pool there is a chance this thread pools may get exhausted and cause issues so that is what we are trying to simulate uh, trying to exhaust the cpu light thread pool by adding a weight function then we have uh, the transform which is returning a completed message back to the client and a simple logger so here from set variable to transform the thread will change from cpu light to cpu intensive and then in logger to cpu intensive as well because cpu intensive is higher than cpu light so in order to save some latency there has been optimization and the thread will never switch to cpu light in this case okay so before we go back uh, do further changes we need to modify the scheduler conf file because the version that i am using has a 4.3 version of the runtime which has uber pool by default so we have to switch back to the legacy thread pool which is the dedicated one so to do that you can just go to the logs search for the mule banner and search for mule home once you get this mule home folder all you need to do is navigate to this location this is where the runtime resides now let me quickly go to this location and i have this uh, folder inside navigate to mule then to conf and open this scheduler pools conf file let's go back to this file and observe here that the current pooling strategy was uber let's change it to dedicated so i'll change it to dedicated all right this is done then move to the dedicated ones and uncomment all the pools so here i see the cpu light thread pool is two into number of course i want to reduce it to quickly simulate otherwise it will take time and i have to do some full fledged stress testing so i keep it as low as possible so that i can quickly simulate the problem remove this uh, comment uncomment this i'll uncomment this this one this one as well and this is the last one i also change the cpu intensive one to size 2 rather than 2 into number of cores you can uh, opt to skip this because now in this case the cpu light is the only one that will get exhausted because it's waiting having done this let's go back to the studio now if you observe the number of threads in the existing uber pool we see that it's having only one thread pool which is uber and it has a max size of 160 which is same as that of a blocking io they both use the same formula we can check this out in the next run when we use the dedicated pool so let me stop this and restart the application so that it uses the dedicated one all right so now the application has been deployed and let's check the uh, scheduler service logs so i see that uh, cpu light is now two okay and the cpu intensive is also two and the io thread pool size is 160 this is the same as the uber thread pool okay so now let's uh, quickly run this application and uh, check the logs so i'll clear this existing logs and uh, hit the application through the browser now in the browser let me hit the endpoint so i'll paste it in t81 and try to simulate a stress so i'll hit the application from multiple tabs so that uh, the thread cpu light waits for 10 seconds and the pool should get exhausted and we should be able to see some logs so all right i think this should be enough let's go back to the studio and see if we have some logs all right so we have some logs popping in the other logs are just no listener found but then we see a uh, process begin logs coming on so process begins this is coming in but the one which is showing warning message is 
complaining about something. So let's see what it complains. It's saying that rejected from scheduler CPU light. So what does this mean? It means that the set variable was doing a blocking operation, waited for 10 seconds. And due to that, it wasn't, the task wasn't able to execute uh, for other request. And that is why the scheduler rejected that request. And it's printing here that pool size is two, active threads are two. Although it didn't cause any error, but it's giving out warning messages since the size of application is quite small and the load that I tested was also not much. We didn't see any visible effect causing issues in the application. But has had this been a real life uh, project? Okay, in that case, we would have definitely observed some issues. So if you go back to the browser, we see that all the requests are completed successfully without any errors but this results into a performance impact and due to this reasons uh, the thread pools were merged into a single uber pool so that it does not get exhausted easily because all of the three of them will have access to the same pool now now other thing to uh, keep in mind that always try to avoid using the wait function uh, in a production code the reason being that despite all the threads being merged into an uber pool we still have the proactor pattern wherein the threads are switching uh, between the tasks depending on uh, how the task is right so since it is switching uh, it could happen that unnecessarily the thread would wait while it can do something useful rather than unnecessarily waiting for other uh, response right so if you really want to implement something like wait function what i would suggest is create a custom connector and implement thread sleep okay and specify the execution type as blocking io that would help the runtime to decide that this is a blocking io and it will optimize the performance or do the self-tuning accordingly so I hope uh, you would have got a understanding of why all these run uh, thread pools were merged into a single Uber pool. Uh, hope this helps. Thanks for watching.